Yesterday was the ninth anniversary of the lynching of a police officer named Darren Wilson. On the morning of August 9th, 2014, Wilson tried to detain 18-year-old Michael Brown, who had just robbed a convenience store and attacked the store clerk. And that's when, according to the Obama DOJ, quote, Wilson and other witnesses stated that Brown reached into Wilson's SUV through the open driver's window and punched and grabbed Wilson. Investigators made the determination by observing, quote, Bruising on Wilson's jaw and scratches on his neck, the presence of Brown's DNA on Wilson's collar, shirt, and pants, and Wilson's DNA on Brown's palm. Brown then tried to grab Wilson's gun. Wilson shot him. Brown ran away, then turned around and charged at Wilson, and Wilson fatally shot Brown in self-defense. Now, the Obama DOJ did everything it could to find some way to charge Darren Wilson, yet those were their conclusions. Wilson did nothing wrong, much to the dismay of those who wished to sacrifice him on the altar of racial justice. Now, despite media reports, not a single witness ever claimed that Brown said, don't shoot. And all the witnesses who claimed that Brown's hands were in the air were either contradicted by the evidence or later recanted their testimony or both. Those are the factual details. And if you're so inclined, you can read the full DOJ report online and see it all laid out. What you can find online is what exactly happened to Darren Wilson. His name is never mentioned in the media. It's as if he never existed. The handful of reports on Wilson in recent years suggest that he's living a life of anonymity in the middle of nowhere and that he'll never be able to work as a police officer again. His life was destroyed. Nobody who defamed him as a racist killer ever apologized. Nobody who took part in the destruction of an innocent man's life was ever held accountable for it. In a country that cared about police officers or the truth or both, that would be a national scandal. But we don't live in a country like that. So instead, yesterday, the only name you heard on this anniversary was Michael Brown. They canonized him all over again. Here's how one local news report talked about the case. Listen. Happening right now, a ceremony to honor Michael Brown. He's the teenager shot and killed by a police officer after a confrontation. The shooting happened nine years ago today. Brown's death sparked protests in Ferguson and all across the country. This is a live picture from Canfield Drive where it happened. Dozens of people have gathered to remember him. Just moments ago, they held a moment of silence for four and a half minutes, representing the four and a half hours Brown's body laid on the street after the shooting. The prosecutor later announced a grand jury had ruled the shooting was justified. Charges were never filed against the officer involved. A ceremony to honor Michael Brown, the teenager shot and killed by a police officer after a confrontation. That's how a news station, quote unquote, is talking about a thug who attacked a store clerk and then tried to kill a police officer. They don't mention any of those facts that we just reviewed because they're inconvenient. Instead, the news station informs you that Brown's body laid in the street for several hours after the shooting as if that's somehow incriminating or even relevant. Of course, they leave out the fact that the mob, the mob that gathered made processing the crime scene so difficult that Ferguson had to call in the SWAT team to control the situation. They don't mention all the lies that the supposed witnesses told the media, like the false claim that Michael Brown had been shot in the back. That never happened. It wasn't just one news station that decided to lie yesterday about this. They all did it. Here's how the local Fox station described what happened. Listen. Welcome back to the 9 a.m. Today marks the ninth year since the passing of Michael Brown. Junior, um, and this tragic incident was uh, sparked an uproar not only in Ferguson but across our nation for change against police brutality and injustice faced by African Americans. Again, without mentioning any details of what Michael Brown actually did, we're told this case has something to do with police brutality and injustices faced by African Americans. That intro was, was followed by a sympathetic clip with Michael Brown's family. Apparently, Darren Wilson's family wasn't available. Uh, maybe they're in hiding. We really don't know. What we can say for sure is that there weren't any memorial events honoring Darren Wilson yesterday in St. Louis. Instead, the city put on a series of events celebrating the legacy of the thug who robbed stores and attacked a police officer. Watch. Today marks nine years since the death of Michael Brown in Ferguson. The metro area is honoring his life today with two memorial events. And our Sydney Stallworth is live in Clayton with today's tributes. Good morning, Sydney. 
Good morning, Michelle Rennie. On August 9th, 2014, Michael Brown was shot and killed in the streets of Ferguson following a confrontation with a Ferguson police officer. Now, his death sparked outrage in this community and far beyond, leading to demonstrations and calls for police reform nationwide. And in just a couple of hours, our community is going to honor Brown's life and legacy. Now, organizers for these events in his honor are acknowledging that this painful moment of our past can hopefully usher in a new future for our community. The first tribute will be held on Canfield Drive in Ferguson, where Michael Brown was shot and killed. A four and a half minute of silence will be held there at 1115 AM to remember the four and a half hours his body laid in the street. Michael Brown was shot, was shot and killed following a confrontation, the reporter tells us. So there's that word again. It was a confrontation. It doesn't imply any kind of fault by one side or the other. It doesn't tell you anything. It leaves you completely in the dark, which is the exact opposite of what the news media is supposed to do. They just want you to know that the community came together to, quote, honor Michael Brown's life and legacy. They don't bother explaining why Brown's life and legacy deserves to be honored. What exactly is his legacy? These so-called reporters, they know exactly what they're doing. They're lying on purpose about something that anybody with a Google can, can, uh, can prove is, is, is a lie in about five seconds. That's all it takes. But obviously, none of these people can think for themselves. So the question becomes, where are they getting the idea to do it? When it comes to carrying your valuables or self-defense items in your vehicle, most people feel that they have to choose between safety or convenience. Someone breaking into your car will typically check the glove box, under the seats, the center console, well, now we can outsmart them with the headrest safe, which gives you convenience and peace of mind. This is a headrest. The headrest safe is exactly what it sounds like. You can place your standard uh, headrest in your car with their easy to access safe. To access the safe, you just pull the side part and then you can either use your fingerprint, use a key, or manually type in the code to open the safe. Uh, and that's it. There's all the stuff in there that you need right there. Very, very convenient and also tricky. They'll never know the criminals unless they're watching this ad. So let's hope they don't. I don't have a lot of criminals watching this show. That's the good thing. Uh, there's no way that anyone could know that your headrest safe is even there. And even if they did, there's no way they could get it open without uh, using one of the three methods to unlock it. So the headrest, headrest safe has a, a universal design that allows it to fit all vehicles. And the best part is these come in a variety of colors to make the interior of your car and match it perfectly. Uh, I have their black leather Vulcan headrest for my vehicle, and I love it. I took my family out to dinner last week, and the restaurant only had valet parking. Well, thanks to my headrest safe, I was able to leave valuables in my car that I wanted to keep extra safe. Depending on the day, uh, I'll put self-defense items, cash, or medications in this safe. It gives me peace of mind knowing that it'll stay out of the hands of our kids, valets, or intruders. So, what are you waiting for? Save $100 at theheadrestsafe.com with promo code Walsh. At checkout, that's theheadrestsafe.com, promo code Walsh. Well, we know that the, uh, the Obama administration benefited from lying about Michael Brown all the way back in 2014, just as they benefited from lying about Trayvon Martin and all the other race hoaxes. That's why the Obama DOJ investigated Ferguson's police department and many other police departments and claim that they must be racist because they pull over more black people than white people. It didn't matter to the DOJ, apparently, that Ferguson is an overwhelmingly black town, which might be the reason why more black people are pulled over. They just ran with that reasoning because they knew the city didn't have the money or the PR resources to fight them. In fact, when the city publicly announced that it disagreed with the Obama DOJ's ridiculous reasoning, the DOJ called the city racist again just for daring to challenge their narrative. So you're racist, and if you deny that you're racist, then, well, that's just more evidence that you're racist. It's basically what the DOJ said. And again, that document is online if you want to read it. But it still doesn't answer the question of why now. I mean, why is the media still lying now, nine years later, about this shooting, when everyone knows they're lying? Well, it could be that they're still taking orders from the Democrat Party, which somehow has not given up on this lie. Squad benchwarmer Corey Bush tweeted yesterday, quote, Today is the ninth anniversary of Mike Brown's killing. He would be alive today if the institutions of racism and white supremacy were eradicated. He should be alive today. We will never forget. We will continue to fight for justice and accountability. Of course, Ben Crump and various left-wing groups said more or less the same thing. But it's not just a couple of uh, race-hustling lawyers and politicians from Missouri who are lying about Michael Brown. The Biden administration at the highest levels is also portraying Michael Brown as a hero. Again, even now, they're still doing it. This was the State Department's new equity representative speaking yesterday as uh, Tony Blinken looked on. Listen to what she said. 
I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge that today is also the anniversary of the killing of Michael Brown, an unarmed 18-year-old black teenager whose death in Ferguson, Missouri, sparked a national outcry. His killing, two years after that of 17-year-old Trayvon Martin, was a pivotal moment in our country, prompting the need to affirm that black lives matter a slogan that has gained global resonance, not only for people of African descent. Well, that's interesting. The State Department, which uses coordinated disinformation campaigns to inspire color revolutions overseas with the express goal of overthrowing foreign governments, is now deliberately lying about a police shooting in Ferguson, Missouri from nine years ago. They're telling you that an unarmed black teenager was just murdered by a cop for no reason uh, nine years after that narrative was completely and totally debunked. So why are they doing that? They know exactly how destabilizing that lie has been over the past decade. So take a look at this chart. It shows the rate of violent crime in Ferguson over the past few decades. And that's the red line that you can see on the chart. It also shows you how many cases police have solved in the city over the same period of time. And that's the green line. So you might notice some trends there. It's kind of hard to miss. You see a big bump in violent crime around 2014 when the U.S. government decided to pretend that Michael Brown was a hero, while the number of violent crime cases actually solved goes drastically in the other direction. And you can find similar charts from every major American city uh, that there is. I mean, in recent years, police were either defunded or scared away. No cop wants to be lynched for doing his job, after all, and understandably so. And so, predictably, cities got much more dangerous. A lot of people died. And it started with the Ferguson lie, which was the genesis of the modern BLM movement. Now, to the left, all those deaths were collateral damage. They think it was all worth it because the rise of BLM meant more political power for them. They recruited a mob of enforcers who could literally set entire communities on fire with impunity as a message to the rest of the country. They were able to demonize local police departments and power the FBI, which they controlled. And for the corporations who bankroll Democrats, the rise of BLM was also a welcome diversion from rising populist sentiments in both parties. The lying about Ferguson in that sense isn't so remarkable. The State Department and the Democratic Party are pushing for an internal revolution here for the same reason they push for color revolutions elsewhere. They want to tear down the system of government that we have in this country and our rule of law and our traditions. They want to tear it all down. And they want to replace them with something very different, something uh, equitable as they would say, with them in charge, of course. So far, their strategy is working, we have to say. And it's a perfect example of how the left plays the long game. Okay, they've obtained total narrative control. Now, sure, their whole narrative was debunked when it comes to Michael Brown, when it comes to many of these BLM cases. It's completely debunked. But what do they care? They'll just keep repeating the lie year after year after year until eventually the other side gets tired of correcting it. And then what happens? Well, their version makes it into the history books. It does make you question how much of the stuff that you find in history books can actually be trusted. You know, if Cory Bush and the State Department and the entire media and Democrat Party can lie about something that we all remember, what happens when there's nobody left who remembers it? The unfortunate reality is that historical lies gain more power and momentum as time goes on and we move further away from the event they're lying about. The truth, however, doesn't have that kind of advantage. It doesn't benefit from the distance. If anything, as time goes on, for the truth, the road becomes harder. And that is exactly what the left is counting on. Now let's get to our five headlines. Hey, YouTube, thanks for listening to the show. If you'd like access to my full show with no ads, you should go to dailywire.com and use promo code Walsh to get two months free on all annual plans. See you there.